Hey everyone, Marty here. I um, This is day 10 and uh, Ara, you put a great one here. <laughs> I know who you really are. <laughs> I'm going to read this. So, um, could you do tapping on fear of never being able to love and accept myself <clears throat> completely and totally? Of never being able to stop judging myself all the time? Because of all the health issues, money issues, relationship issues in my life at this time. Not believing that I can love myself just as I am right now. Because every time I say I love and accept myself, a little voice comes up that says, No, you don't. How could you love yourself just as you are right now? All You have all these health and money issues. So don't really believe, So I don't really believe I can love you at this time. You need to get healthy and wealthy again before you can ever really love and accept you. Then the feeling of sadness comes up about all of this. This is so huge and and thank you so much for posting this. Um, it will help everyone, you know, the vulnerability of this. So <clears throat> it was funny, I was talking to somebody yesterday about this. Um, it is a practice, absolutely, and for me, as I learn to like allow, like keep turning things over, keep surrendering things, it's a practice. It, it doesn't mean it's easy. Like I say, I get taken out all the time and I'm like, whoa, there's the thought. But uh, what I notice now is it's almost become this game for me to, um, to, to notice like, oh wow, there's that thought. You know, I, I love those Course of Miracles. Love did not create this thought. I choose to see love instead of this, even if I don't believe it. I keep saying that to myself um, in conjunction with tapping. So um, on this one, as always on any of these videos, please take responsibility for yourself. And if you get really triggered when you tap on this, the key is to keep tapping. Trust the tapping. Just keep tapping until you feel relief. Um, and sometimes that can take a while. Um, I had one time I just said, you know, during the anxiety, I was tapping for like 45 minutes. So um, I would just say, don't do this video or don't do any of these videos unless you know you have some, hey, Marat, how are you? I'm going to wave back at you. Don't do these videos unless you know you have some time afterwards in case you get triggered so that you can um, you can keep tapping if you need to. That is the key, is if you get triggered, again, if strong emotions surface, that is fabulous. I know it doesn't feel that way in the moment, but it's fantastic because it means you've targeted the thing and you're actually calling up that neural pathway, calling up those cells, and then if you're tapping, you're starting to release them. So that's always key. Um, Brett, I'm so happy you're here live. It's always nice to have live people. It's just kind of fun. Um, so let's just dive in and start tapping. Karate chop. <sighs> That's a good one. Even though I have this fear that I am never, ever, ever going to completely love myself and accept myself. And that's probably true. Completely. I choose to acknowledge I feel this way. Even though I have this fear that I will never completely love and accept myself. That thought scares me. I choose to acknowledge my feelings now. Even though I have this fear, I am never, ever, ever going to completely love and accept myself because I learned to treat myself the way I was treated. I have conditional love for myself, just like they did for me. I choose to acknowledge my feelings now. 
go to the eyebrow. There's all these conditions that have to be met. For me to actually love and accept myself completely, I have to get over my health issues. I have to get over my money issues. I have to get over my relationship issues. I got to be over all of them before I can ever truly, completely love and accept myself. That's basically what I was taught. That these conditions have to be met. Hey, Osama. These conditions have to be met before I'm allowed to love and accept myself. Oh my God. That's crazy. But that's what I learned from them. Let me try this on again. I have to be free of all my health issues, free of all my money issues, free of all my relationship issues before I'm allowed to love and accept myself. Good luck. But that's what they taught me. And what if I might have issues in all these areas come and go the rest of my life? And what if I don't have to make myself wrong for that? What if that's how I learn and grow? Really? So what if I still have issues in these areas? I'm getting better. Sorry, there's a bug going in my ear. I am getting better. I'm seeing improvement. No, I'm not. But what if the problem is, I learned a long time ago to focus on what's not working, what's not changing for me, what's not happening instead of seeing all the incremental changes, even if it's that much that I'm making, what if that's my only problem? I just learned to give so much more air time to how I'm messing up, how my health's still not where I want it to be, how my relationships can still be sticky, how my money's not where I want it to be. And what if that's the very thing I need to take a look at? Start to notice all the improvements. Because there are, they are there. I just didn't learn to give them any air time. What if I can start taking a little inventory every day on all the tiny shifts I see That starts to build my momentum towards what's improving. What if that's possible? 
And what if my only real problem here is how much and how often I judge myself for not being perfect? And what if I can start to make it okay? Really make it okay to not be perfect. Really. What if right here, right now, flaws, foibles, and all, I am acceptable. I really am lovable. And whenever I hear that voice telling me that I'm not, that's the perfect time to interrupt it. I'm not lovable. What if I am? I'm not acceptable. What if I am? I am not lovable. Because I don't have perfect health, perfect relationships, and a perfect relationship with my money. When I say that out loud, it sounds a bit crazy. And what if I really am always looking to be a better version of myself? And what if that's enough? And then take a breath. So um, this, this is so huge. It's, um, it's that model of perfection that we all learned. And we learn to make ourselves wrong. And that's the key is, is to be like, to, when you notice that voice going, ah, you're still having problems. Or, I, I tapped on a particular issue with a relationship that I had for three years. And I'm not saying that to be discouraging to anybody where I was like, this is not working. I, I do it for a freaking living. I'm like, this is not changing. And then all of a sudden, but I kept trusting the tapping. All of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, like there's so many shifts happening here and I think the thing with with tapping and it's it, why it's really good to do it every day when you can is you're you're drilling down deeper the thing is you didn't come to these beliefs like that they got embedded over time so the idea when you're tapping to interrupt that it, what's so awesome is that you hear the voice I mean it doesn't feel that way when you hear it it's like hey you'll never make it you're not good enough you know I I always animate that voice. I call it Hagatha. Um, for me, it's like, she's like, you'll never make it. Who do you think you are? Blah, blah. It's that kind of voice. It's like, really? I literally used to call it the voice that's trying to kill me because it felt that harsh. So you can do the tapping like, I'm, a, I'm not acceptable. Yes, I am. Argue tapping is great for this. I'm not lovable. Yes, I am. And what if I am? What if isn't a way to ease yourself into believing it? That's huge. So anytime you hear that, I highly recommend you argue, tap that back and forth and maybe do that daily. And here's the key too, is noticing those tiny little shifts. It's huge to notice that. Um, like, and it, you may not feel them at all. Like when I was tapping through my own issues with anxiety, I was like, oh my God, I think I'm going to feel this way forever. But I was very much trusting the tapping and going, no, nope. and I know at some point it's like a fever, it's going to break. Oh my God, thank you, Marat. That's so good. Perfectionism is a disease. How, well, well said. Um, but that's what we learned. You know, you got to be perfect to be acceptable, to be lovable. And if you think about it, when you say it out loud, like, I got to have perfect health, perfect money, perfect relationships. Like, I can't even say it now and take it seriously. They got to be perfect. But I also know in the moment when I'm feeling that way, when say I feel like, um, oh, I've kind of gone backwards a bit. Nah, I, I go back to that. No, I just, those are the moments to remind yourself. I'm always gonna be a work in progress. I am. 
And, and that's so often why I share my own stuff, my own flaws and foibles, because, um, you know, I'm a work in progress, too. We're all works in progress. I told the story about where I'm like, I'm going to get all gangster and throw down with this 94-year-old man. It's like, oh, my God. But I grabbed myself by it was like, Marty, it's really, I mean, I didn't know he was 94 at the time, but it was just like, whoa. I realized I got really triggered by something. I was like, I choose to see love instead of this. And... And because I've been tapping so much, that's what I believed allowed me to have that shift and go, whoa, catch it. I had to do a lot of tapping and still fight it. It's like breaking an addiction. And thank you for saying that to Marette, because that's the other thing. We literally become addicted to the emotions. Like our cells become addicted to those emotions. And this is another good point. Sometimes when you've been tapping a lot and you'll have a time where you feel like it's getting worse, that's actually also a really good sign because what it's telling you, it's like the cells are like, wait, 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 where's our flood of addiction? Where's our flood of addiction? Where's our flood of addiction? And just keep tapping because that's about the time that you're getting ready for even more of a breakthrough. And I've totally found that to be true in my life. Thank you, Marette, for all these comments. They're so awesome. So anyway, that's it for now. Um, Ara, thank you for posting this. And I forgot to tag you on it, but I'll tag you in there. Marette, always glad you're here. And thank you for those contributions. It's awesome. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye for now.